So I have, uh, I have a question first for Kansas City in 2016. How can a tried chairmanship possibly work? We see this working somewhat as Chicago did with the flying monkeys, but without Dave. <laughs> Budget is not particularly accounting for anything. 
I don't believe this was asking about the bid necessarily. So oh, the think, Worldcon? Yeah. It doesn't say, really, if it's the bid or the Worldcon, would they benefit from getting surplus funds from the World Fantasy? If there were a surplus from the World Fantasy and a need to actually move funds into a Worldcon, then Wawa might vote to do such, but there is no plan for that at the moment. Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I envision somebody sitting in the middle of the floor. Wawa. <laughs> well, do you expect? To, I'm just. He's giving, he's giving me all your questions. I don't know why. Do you expect any impact from running on Gen Con's traditional weekend? We don't particularly expect much. They are across a few state lines. Uh, and everything in that range has something big on the weekend, whether it's Gen Con, Pensick. Uh, the, the whole mid-July to Labor Day run is full of big conventions, and we are one of them. So, no, I don't expect a particularly large impact. So, I have a question for Dublin. Um, given the cancellation policy on the um, Eurocon oh, yeah. hotels was um, Possibly the most draconian I think any of us have ever seen. Um, how are you planning on dealing with that for the world come? Well, first, it's not on our list of hotels we're looking to negotiate with. Um, and at this time, you know, we're not that far into the hotel negotiation process. We've been really focusing more on the convention center uh, for the moment. And uh, so obviously, we will keep it in mind when we are negotiating with the hotels. So it won't be draconian. Um, and we have a question for Finland, which is, can they see the next slide, please? <laughs> Are we allowed to explain it to you? <laughs> sure, if you can do it quickly. Can we, can we come back to that question? It'll take like 30 seconds. Okay. Um, and for the four 2017 bids, why 2017 specifically, um, particularly in such a crowded year, um, given the expenses of, of bidding in general? Um, if you can keep it brief and sort of a couple of sentences each. Shall I stop? Sure, why not? 17 is not 16, and we've said we would not be doing 16 quite a few times. 18, from our point of view, would be far too much for stepping on Dublin's toes. We don't want to be splitting European fandom in any way at all. You're welcome. And 17 is the 100th anniversary for Finland. And we figured that'd be kind of nice. And related to that, there might be some cultural funding that we could possibly apply for, which would make uh, our situation overall better. Shall I just go on this and or yes. later? That's the map of the world. Uh, Hezekiah is red. The green dots are the people that we've currently got as on our committee and uh, agents. We just want to make the point that we are not just a Finnish bid. We are a European and a world bid. It's upside down. It's from the center of the world. So, yeah. So go, go back to the previous questions to remind you why, why did people go into 17 when it's crowded? Um, well, it wasn't crowded when we came in because we came in first. Um, why 17 particularly people have asked us why when we uh, extended the debt from 2007 came out? Uh, we've always said we think it would be uh, ridiculous to try and run a Tokyo and a New Zealand World Cup at any closer than three years apart. Um, but we support the New Zealand guys, so therefore if we don't go for 17, we would have to move to 23. Um, so we, um, when it became clear that it wasn't the best year for us, um, it was the choice between 17 or delay for six years, so we decided to keep going for 17. As you said, it wasn't that crowded when we came in because we were second. Um, but it's our 150th and our 375th, and we'd like to show everybody a full extent of Canadian science fiction. I think we are more prevalent than you think we are.
Well, I pretty much answered this earlier. I, I will repeat to a degree. You bid when you have the convergence of facilities and committee, and I believe we have great facilities and a strong committee. So we're bidding for 2017. Thank you very much. Uh, Helsinki in 2017. How can you run a real Finnish world con when Finnish fans expect to get in free? They don't. Not to a world con. A world con, you pay for your membership. This is an accepted thing. We'd be doing our damnedest to make it as cheap as possible, <laughs> but it's not going to be you know, free. Our, our previous budget had our membership rates attending at around 90 euros, maybe even 80. So we we do want to make it affordable, but everyone knows that Worldcom is not free. Including Finns! <laughs> <laughs> and New Zealand in 2020, how can you possibly staff a Worldcon in New Zealand? Where will the staff come from? Well, we have... Actually, some experienced con runners in New Zealand. Uh, also, we will be making an outreach to basically con runners all throughout the world for assistance in, in running a world con in New Zealand. It will not be strictly New Zealand effort. Uh, we, we understand the need to have a, a diverse and wide-ranging uh, committee base and fan base uh, working on and running the convention. So, outreach, outreach, outreach. So, I have a question for KC in 2016. Is your site within walking distance of a Sheridan's frozen custard location? <laughs> I'm afraid not. They're, they are all within driving distance, but they are all in the suburbs. And However, they're constantly expanding, so that may change by the time 2016 rolls around. Have you thought of having a franchise inside the convention center? <laughs> <laughs> we could ask. Actually, I think the closest one is at Crown Center, which is on the other edge of downtown. So I'm incorrect about it being the suburbs, but I think there is one actually in Crown Center. And a question to the 2017 um, conventions again. Um, how are you making sure your world come bid will truly be a world convention? Well, DC is very well connected to the world through its airports. Uh, we are served by Washington Dulles and by Baltimore Washington International. And also there are some international flights into uh, Nashville. However, we have been recruiting to the best degree we can from outside the US. Uh, we, we did finally find some non-Americans who were willing to stand and be counted. Uh, but we do have great connections around the world. Many of us have worked on foreign world cons before and would be willing to do so again. And we believe that we can bring in international con runners the same as we have done to them. Canada, like the United States, is the mosaic and it's not the melting pot. So we feel that we already have a large chunk of the world with us and we can outreach to them, especially the Francophonie community, which is the international French community as well. Um, but, you know, if we want to go English, we have the only Gaelic talk outside of Ireland. We have communities from Scotland. Um, Canada is really much more international in the United States. And in that aspect. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure. But, again, we have a good relationship with Whoever wins the uh, election in 2015, I'm sure that some of the other bidders for 2017 will be joining Concrete. So in terms of the uh, international representation of Concrete, I think all of us have been for 2017 will have a reasonable spread of people on the committee. In terms of making it international, um, Japan is one of those weird and wonderful international places um, that a lot of people really want to go to. Um, and we think we have one of the most international cons we've ever had for a world con in 2007. And we hope to replicate and deepen that for 2017. 
one of the reasons we're bidding for Helsinki in 2017 is to have a better way of bringing together European fandom in particular, but also by extension fandom globally, uh, not just Anglophone or Francophone fandom, uh, but fandom everywhere. And we are, uh, we had a map. Um, <laughs> we got people already on board from pretty much everywhere, and we want to get the, the, the wonder of world come to everyone. And we know that in order to get that to come to go through, we need to have people who know how to reach local fandom. It's not the same as it's not conventions everywhere. Knowing and knowing um, having people that know. How to, how to reach out to fandom that's not connected to this fandom yet is one of the main things why we're doing what we're doing. And a question for Nippon 2017. Um, a co-chair situation is, is generally very difficult, um, possibly made even more so by different nationalities. How do you see um, your co-chair set up working? Um, the main arrangement would be that my co-chair, um, Tawaka Kodala, um, would focus on the internal stuff in Japan, the, uh, the site, the Japanese guests, um, the Japanese organisation. Um, I would focus on the international side. Um, the um, uh, communication between the services is good. His English is um, now fairly reasonable. Those of you who know him, see his English gets better and better over the years. My Japanese is improving. Um, I can help on the regional conversation in Japanese. Um, so I think the communication there wouldn't be an issue. Um, and we work very well together, and we did on 2007, where we worked um, with it very closely together um, on our areas there. Thank you. Uh, for Dublin, what's the bad job? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So when James emailed this to me, and I read it, I, I did not know whether to laugh or cry, um, because I was the one who had to read this. The voting process was explained in detail, how every vote contributes to the con, the importance of voting, and of course, the parable of the Chicago 12 of 2006 was read solemnly. <laughs> So we have a general question to the bidders, and uh, I'd ask you, you know, whoever wants to dive in on this, and we'll know if you didn't, um, and, and you should keep it brief, please. What will you do to bridge the generation and race gap so I'm not attending old white man pop 37? I did not write this, because I'm an old woman of 56. So I got my mind so I'll stop. Um, Finnish fandom does not really have an age problem. We've got young people continuously coming in and, and staying in and going on and being a part of fandom. Of course, they are Finns for the most part. But they're not all Finns. We are very inclusive, even in Finnish fandom. And we think we have solutions. We'd like to show our solutions to the rest of the world. Maybe even you could learn something from us. Um old white man convention. Um, no, I think I can comfortably predict that the convention dominated by old white men, um, even though one of the two co-chairs is by then an old white man. Um, 2009 wasn't dominated by old white men. I'm obviously not. You know, I, I think Montreal is one of those international cities on the planet, and we could recruit it from them, we'll do it again. New Orleans is a young town, and we have a lot of young fans. The um, and what we have is passion and energy about everything we do. Um, so I, I don't think that would be a problem at all. I mean, our local fan, um, our local con committees are, are incredibly diverse in terms of race and gender and um, sexual orientation and all that sort of thing. 
So um, I really don't. I really don't see that as an issue. Uh, we will do outreach. The, um, we are very open to ideas, and I, I'm quite enamored of um, of Detroit's idea of a scholarship. So we we've been going through these these issues, and um, it's like we are an international city. We um, voted the um, one of the National Geographic's top 20 cities in the world to visit. And so I, I think that um, our New Orleans will come will be diverse. We have been actively um, attempting to recruit younger people to work on our world pond, to be brought into uh, Conrad in general. And um, as a result, I think the average age of our committee is lower than it has been in the past. Um, we also will take talent and interest wherever we find it. We do not um, pay particular attention to a person's um, age, although we are encouraging other people, or race, or anything like that. We have a, a fairly diverse committee already, um, and uh, the people that we have been talking to. And uh, we will continue to work on that. Well, I think we've got the age thing covered. I believe I'm the youngest person standing up here. <laughs> we are sitting. <laughs> <laughs> However, in, in general, our committee is, is fairly broadly diverse in age. We are not as diverse as we might be in terms of race, but we have been inclusive of people of color where we can be. And as D.C. itself is a very diverse city. We hope that our local outreach will help contribute to the overall diversity of the convention. Okay, for the potential San Jose in 2018 bid, um, you may have noticed I'm actually part of the Debt Con One Committee. And, um, been paying close attention, working very closely in terms of our efforts for outreach uh, both to youth and to people of color minority groups, uh, many underrepresented groups. And I would trust that, one, we'd be able to evaluate the um, effectiveness of those efforts of bringing in younger, more diverse uh, attendees for a convention and apply that to any potential 2018 bid that we may have. Uh, second, in terms of New Zealand in 2020, uh, the convention running uh, groups in that area actually skew very young. Um, I've actually attended our country, which was the New Zealand National Convention back in 2010, just before ASICON. And um, the con runners there, again, they skew very uh, young compared to world con runners in uh, terms of age. I'm not really in a good position to address the issue of, say, racial diversity regarding uh, New Zealand, uh, but in terms of youth and involving younger, at least younger con runners and hopefully younger attendees, um, actually in very good shape in that regard. Um, much like Dave, I'm not really in a good position to talk too much about you know, racial things in Ireland. <laughs> um, <laughs> We, we are tolerant of all, despite any religious differences. Um, we do have a fair number of uh, younger folks, though, on the, uh, who are working on this and the planning and everything. And you know, I know certainly outreach will be done to other groups. Uh, and you know, it's, it's your, it's pretty diverse. Again, 21 is a long time from now. We are. We'll definitely build on any efforts by all the wonderful conventions coming before us. Uh, with our local convention in Dallas, we're trying to go where, quote, non-traditional old white guy fandom is and promote. Um, I'm seeing very diverse crowds at the Dallas Comic Cons and Sci-Fi Expo shows that they have there. We have booths there. We're talking to people. Interest in uh, our local literary convention goes up every year. We only get a few people buying memberships, but they're stopping and talking and asking 
question that we're trying to say, this is a great, fun community, come join it, and we'll be building our world come. It's to start with out of the community we're building in the Dallas area right now. Obviously, 22 is far in the future. We will build on anything good that comes from the years in front of us. However, if nothing good comes from the year in front of us, we will execute a plan of targeted assassination. <laughs> So, and I have a question for the NIPON 2017, um, somewhat more serious. Um, there were certainly issues in 2007 with financial transparency. Um, some of it cultural, some of it, I think, you know, just inexperienced. The question really is, what are you going to do to prevent that occurring again in 2017? Yeah. Well, I mean, the co-chair who's uh, uh, not from uh, the Japanese culture in that, I think, helps. Um, the rest of the committee actually on the transparency issue rather than the, uh, uh, the competence issue. We were all horrified about to find out that it had been um, concealed. And as soon as we found out about it, we found out about it a few weeks before I came to SmothCon and announced it. Um, there was no way, as soon as I knew, or as soon as anyone else on the, on the 27 committee knew about that, that it was going to be continued to be concealed. Um, in terms of the issue of the debt being created in the first place, um, we've recruited Phil Stockerty and should he win, he will be the head of finance for the convention. Um, we haven't started working on the budget yet because we haven't finished negotiating with the site, the site, the site um, which of course is a, a big chunk of the budget. But as soon as we've negotiated with the site, and that's one of the um, restrictions on the site is that we know we can afford one, so we're looking to get a good deal on the site, um, then we will work out a budget right from the word go, um, and there will be open, transparent budgeting, and there will be actually proper budgeting, which there really wasn't last time. I think also the question though is, is more primarily how are you looking to push a culture down through your convention committee of actual fiscal responsibility? It has to come from the top. I, I, to give you an example, I, I, those who don't know me know these are very hard not to um, be in any way disrespectful to me I sound, but as a division head for NIP on 2007, I spent the first three months of 2007 arguing with him for a budget for my division. I was faced with the uh, choice of either walking away from the convention or working without a budget and just trying to spend as little as possible, which is what I did as a, as a division head. Um, that would not be the case next time around. Um, you have to have a budget, you have to stick to it, it has to be a line item budget. A line item budget. Um, um, we've been doing that for the last four years, uh, three years with Halcom. We're doing it for next year's Japanese National. Within my group, it is an embedded, accepted um, approach. Um, that's how we're already running our existing conventions, and that's how we would run um, the World Cup 2017. Thank you very much, Vic. We very much appreciate all of you playing this enormously hot room and, uh, and being supportive of the bidders for various years. Um, a, a couple, we have a couple of general notes, please. Um, one of those.